money, they have, you know, blessings, and they are now, you know, being worshipped almost. And so they themselves are elevating themselves, assaulting themselves as if they are the chosen ones by God. And many of them will come and tell you mesmerizing stories that uh, God has appeared to them. And God has chosen him in particular, them in particular, to be the ones to bring deliverance to all the people, all other people. That you are not chosen. You are just ordinary. I am the one who is chosen by God. They will have some dreams that they have to tell you that God has appeared to them. They have some attention that they will tell you that God has... <laughs> no, nothing special. I'm just... <laughs> don't look at, you know, they have some... They, they have to... Uh, they, they have some stories, some dreams they have to tell. They have some... Uh, some you know, some... some some mesmerizing signs that they will come up with to prove to you that they must rule over you. Or they have special access to God, special privileges in, before God, that God has put them in special places Why he has not put you in special places. So, so, so then they will come up with some testimonies and some stories and make people to affirm the fact that they are chosen and they are, you are not chosen. So you have to all follow them. That is a sign of idol worshipping and paganism that is paganism that is not idol worship i mean that is idol worshipping paganism and it is not christianity so how does christianity uh no no how does christianity how is christianity different from this how does it differ how does christianity differ from these things okay like i have said already paganism emphasizes thank you girls paganism emphasizes the power of the chosen the privileges of the chosen so people who have money or who have some spirit, some purported spiritual power, they are regarded as the chosen ones, as the special ones. Why, you know, the ordinary people are regarded as just, you know, the mortals, subjects that must be, you know, that, 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 uh, that must be ruled and, you know, governed. But in Christianity, Christianity emphasizes redemptive power, redemption. Every in Christianity, the Jesus Christ died for all, so that all will become sons of God. In Christianity, everyone is chosen. You are a chosen people, a chosen nation. Everybody is chosen. Everyone is chosen. There is no one that is superior to another one. That is why the Bible says that in Christianity, to them that believe in him, as many as have received him, he gives the power, as many. As many, everybody has the same power. And they have the power to become sons of God. That is why you don't need to go to church to look for God. You don't need to go anywhere to look for God. Because the Bible has said in, in John chapter 4 that nobody, it will come that day that those who will worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. And so nobody will need to go to this mountain to look for God again. Or nobody will go to that mountain to look for God. Or to this temple to look for God. You don't need to go to church. You need, don't need to go to some special church to look for God. You, you yourself, you are a royal priest, priesthood. You are a royalty. You are a priesthood all by yourself. You don't need any pastor to access God. If you know it is it is in paganism or in the Old Testament that you need a priest or you need a voodoo or you need somebody to access God. But in Christianity, you don't need any pastor, you don't need me, because there is only one mediator between God and man, and that person is Jesus Christ. You don't need anybody to access God. You yourself, like the, the, the curtain has been broken, has been torn into two. You know, the veil that divides heaven and earth, the veil that, uh, that is dividing between you and God has been, has been torn into two. And right now, nobody is in, you are not inferior to anybody and nobody is inferior to anybody. I'm not better than you, you are not better than me. We are on equal standing. But you say, but I'm a pastor and you are not a pastor. But, well, I'm not a pastor, but you are, some, you are not a pastor, but you are somebody. Maybe you are a doctor. You, go, you are gifted in something else. I am gifted in to be a pastor. I have a calling as a pastor. But you also have a calling to be somebody else in your own area too. So we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are all children of God standing on equal grounds. But in paganism, they emphasize that the man of God who is a pastor is the one that must be celebrated. Or is, or the one that is almost near to God. is the one to be worshipped. It is in my native language. Is we, you, now we are treating pastors almost like Orisha, 
Orisha is like gods, the small gods, the ones next to God. Orishas are the ones that are next to God. They are, you go, God is almighty, Olodumare, but the Orishas are the ones who are next to God. Special privileges. They are the humans that have been elevated to the status of God. That is what we are now doing for pastors, which is not Christianity whatsoever. That is now, uh, that is now idol worshipping. That is now paganism. That is no more Christianity. Let's go to the Bible and see what Jesus says about this. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. Matthew 20, 25 to 28 says, But Jesus called them to himself. You see, Jesus, Jesus called his disciples to himself. Can you come? Yeah, at least two of you come. See what Jesus did? Jesus called them to himself. You also come close. You say, yeah, yeah. Not just two of you, it's okay. Okay, three of you can okay, come. Closer to me, closer to me. See what Jesus did? Jesus called them to himself. Jesus is touchable. Jesus could be touched. Jesus is not estranging himself from people. But today, the men of God today, they estrange themselves from people. Oh, you're a woman, you cannot come to me because you might make me dirty. Or you might not be, not be holy enough. Or people will think bad about me. But see what Jesus is saying. He said, but Jesus called his disciples, called people to himself. In fact, there was a time when Jesus, when somebody was anointing Jesus' head with oil, people said, don't they know, does he know that he's a, he's a, he's a, she's a, she's a prostitute? And as a prostitute, she, she shouldn't allow, allow her to come close to him. Why? Because she's not worth it. He's, she's a sinner, but not Jesus. Jesus brought people to himself and he allowed, he, he, the Bible says, we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched. Try to touch me, touch me. You see, they are touching me. We don't have such a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. With the feelings of our infirmity. We, our high priest can be touched. But today, you better don't go close to a man of God. But here in the Bible, he said, but Jesus called them to himself. To himself. He called them to himself. Thank you. <laughs> he called them to himself. That is what we as pastors are supposed to be. We are supposed to be accessible. You know, there is somebody who wrote me yesterday, I mean, the other day and said, what is the proof that uh, one of the men of God that I mentioned is, is not a man of God? I said, okay. Because he said, I am not a man of God because I, I call them occultic. And he said, what is the proof? I should give him the proof that those men are not men of God. I said, okay, you see, you wrote me now and I'm writing you back. I'm replying your letter to tell you that I am the one replying now. To show either those people are men of God or not. You know, go ahead and write them too. You, you, you've you been following them for 10 years, yeah? You, you follow one for 10 years. You follow another one for 15 years. Write 